So now we're going to discuss applying the second coat of uh, compound on the wall. Uh, we've got a wall that we've done already yesterday. It's all first coated. Everything's dry. Uh, we first coated the screws as well, which uh, when you do first coat them, it's just a matter of a little dab of drywall. You basically just want to fill in the, the indentation that's left there. So uh, first thing you want to do before you start your second coat, take your trowel. I usually use a five or a six inch trowel for this shot. Uh, you're going to have little edges and bumps and lumps along the edge of what you did to start with yesterday. So just kind of go around, knock off some of that stuff so that it doesn't uh, mess up your finished product on your second coat. Knock off those lumps. Uh, you could do this with sandpaper as well. Uh, it just ends up being a little more messy because you've got that fine dust everywhere. Okay. So we knocked the lumps off, now we're ready to go. We're going to start by second coating the uh, flat taped area in the, that was in the bevel. So we've got the mud, uh, this time it isn't thin quite as much as when we were taping. We're back down to the sour cream consistency. Um, so load your blade your knife up. Um, the nice thing about the bevel edges, um, you, you've already got a bit of an indentation there to work with that you need to get flattened out. So you know, apply your apply your mud on there, and then just bring your draw your knife right across horizontally to squeeze off a lot of the excess. This coat basically is just wanting to fill in that bevel that was there, and uh, get yourself back to a to a uh, kind of relatively flat area. You don't want to put too thick of a coat on. Um, it's always better in my mind to do four or five thin coats than two or three really heavy coats. Uh, if you do the heavy coats nine times out of ten you're just going to end up spending a lot more time sanding and as you're going to find out sanding is the worst part of this whole job. So do your thin coats, uh, it may take you a little longer but it's going to save you in the long run. Okay so we've got our bevel, uh, we've got that second coated, now we're going to move on to a inside corner right here and uh, basically same knife again and I just want to uh, apply some mud to both sides of the uh, of the corner and I'm, I'm being fairly liberal here um, but I will be taking most of it off most of it off with the uh, corner trowel and again that's getting back to the thin thin coats uh, so you will sometimes put it on fairly liberal, but you're going to take quite a bit of it off and uh, work with it. So we've got both sides with the compound applied. Now I'm going to switch to the inside corner trowel. And you just want to uh, basically press this into the corner and draw it down up whichever direction you're, you're more comfortable using it. Press it into the corner, the top point uh, with more pressure than the bottom, otherwise you're just going to plow the mud. You want to more or less smooth it out than plow it. Okay, so I've made one run. I've got lots of excess on my trowel. I want to clean that off. Uh, you're probably going to make three, four, five swipes here just to try to get it thinned down. Fairly smooth. Uh, you may end up with a bit of a ridge out here on the edges. Uh, that you can get rid of uh, before you do your next coat again just by knocking it off. Uh, so we're pretty good there. I'm just going to give it one more. Just like that. Always clean your, your tools off so it doesn't dry on the tool which will just cause you lumps in, as you go. Um, okay so there's inside corner. Okay so we've got our, uh, our bevel joint done and our inside corner. Uh, we're going to go to an outside corner now for second coat. So we've got our outside corner here. We've already taken the trowel and knocked off the excess little lumps and bumps that are dried on there. Uh, again, simply uh, apply some compound to each side. I'm using the, the six inch uh, knife again. And uh, I'm just applying some mud. Like so, you know, kind of bringing it out, I don't know, about three inches or something like that. Uh, in this case we're working up against the doorway so it's, you, know, you can only go so far but now again I'm putting my knife at about 30 degrees as compared to the wall and I'm just drawing it down applying some, some pressure 
on the outside edge and right on this corner. And uh, the thickness of the mud will be whatever the difference is in between. So there's one side. And you can see, you can still see some of the, the uh, paper on the corner through there. Don't worry, this is only second coat. That's going to disappear on your third or fourth, fourth coat. So again, same thing, other side. Apply your mud about three, three inches away from the corner. Draw your knife down. Just like so. Don't get too fussy on this, just try to keep it relatively smooth so there isn't a whole bunch of indentations and, and uh, marks like that because it'll just magnify with each, each coat. So try to move uh, slowly but uh, swiftly along there to, to keep it everything moving easily. Um, now if you're second coating a, a butt joint which is uh, the ends of the sheets usually they don't have a bevel built into them. So with the butt joint uh, you're, you're mudding two exact same thickness pieces there. They're, they're at the same level as the wall. Once you get to second and third coats you're, you're going to have to basically build that up just slightly and then as you coat you're going to feather it out just like we will here on our, on our next coat we're going to feather out a little wider and a little wider again. Uh, same thing on the butt joint you're just trying to feather it out so it's not noticeable but yet building it up at the same time. Now to second coat our screws I'm again just using my six inch put a little bit on there like that wipe the excess off on your trowel give it a wipe. Done. Okay now we're gonna I'm gonna show you applying the third coat to this uh, bevel joint here. Uh, same principle as before. Take your knife, just run it along your edges and that to get rid of any little any little lumps that might have been left behind last time. Uh, and like I said before, you can use sander if you want to, but uh, the knife works nice. Um, again, sour cream consistent mud. I'm using my six inch blade, and the idea between each uh, for every coat is you want to get just a little wider every time, so you're slowly tapering out that. That joint. So I'm going to apply it with this 6 inch knife and then I'm going to use a 12 inch, you could use a 10 inch, whatever you, whatever you have for your next step to kind of flatten this out. Okay so I've got that on there. Now I'm going to take my wider knife, this one in this case is a 12 inch, again holding at about 30 degrees pressing it along there and I'm getting rid of that excess. Now you can see that uh, as it pushed out to the side it left a bit of an edge there. If I take my 6 inch and apply some pressure to it on a bit of an angle, so I want my bottom edge touching but my top edge not, it'll just kind of taper that little edge away and it'll make it easier for your next coat when you're doing it. And I'm just going to hit this once more with my 12 inch. It's just like that. So now we've, you know, we've gone right from the 3 inch that we started out with with taping to now all the way up to 12 inches. Uh, you know, so we've got a good, good width on each side of the joint. Um, on a bevel joint, this would probably be sufficient as your final coat. Um, when it comes to a butt joint, I like to taper mine out at least 12 inches each way of the joint. Uh, so that would take at least one more pass with, uh, with the knives. So uh, if you were doing that, again I would apply some, some mud across the joint and this time I'm only going halfway onto it on both sides and I'm just tapering out that much further. Um, You'll get the hang of it once you once you try it. The best idea is try not to have too many butt joints because they do take more work than the bevel. So uh, order your sheets accordingly if you can. If your wall's nine foot eight, get ten foot sheet for there. You don't need a butt joint then. Um, sometimes you just can't get away from it, and you need to have butt joints. Okay, so for the third coat on uh, outside and inside corners, uh, I don't have one that's dry enough to actually show you. Uh, but I can give you the, the gist of what you have to do. Uh, here's the corner that we did a little while ago uh, with the first coat on, a second coat on it, sorry. Uh, so you can see 
it's basically the same width as this six inch blade. This is the blade that I used on there. So on my next coat, I would apply, same principle, apply some mud. Now I'm using an uh, eight inch or a 10 inch blade. Again, just drawing it down the corner, you can see it's gonna get, it's gonna get wider here as we go, as the taper builds out. Um, it's not always necessary to go much wider than, than this 10 inch, but uh, if you need to, you can go another coat and, and taper it out that much further, but uh, usually the 10 inch blade is probably all you're gonna need. And it's the same principle in the inside corners. Uh, now that we've done the second coat on there, you just need to fan them out, tape them out just a little bit further. So um, hopefully this video helped you. I've just tried to show you some of the little things that I've learned uh, over the last 15 years on, I don't know, 70 or 80 jobs uh, doing miscellaneous drywalling. Uh, just some little helpful hints that hopefully you can take home and use for yourself. And thanks for watching today. Uh, hopefully this helped you and uh, you can check this out also on houseimprovements.com.